down 10 points in the fourth quarter of the AFC Championship game, going against probably the best defense in the NFL this season, the Jacksonville Jaguars. No Rob Gronkowski to try to make this comeback. Gronk can cuss out for the second half of the game. No Julian Edelman. He hasn't been around this season at all. Patriots in offense and defense all out with a various amount of different injuries. And then you got the 40-year-old man at the quarterback position with this so-so hand injury trying to spark the comeback. Well, that 40-year-old man at quarterback is Tom Brady. And the coach is Bill Belichick. And the team is the New England Patriots. So is there ever actually a doubt that the Patriots will come back and win this game? It feels weird to say this because normally the team down 10 would not be the favorite to win the game, but you had a better feeling watching that game that the New England Patriots would come back and win than the Jacksonville Jaguars would hang on and win and go to the Super Bowl, right? That's the way I felt because we all saw the Super Bowl less than a year ago. We all saw the Super Bowl views before, views before that against the Seahawks, even the divisional round against the Ravens when they came back down 14. Patriots have done this time and time again with Brady and Belichick, but at the same time, We've also seen the Patriots fall flat on their backs a couple of times, like the Broncos in the AFC Championship game with Peyton Manning's last year. A few years before that, once again, against the Denver Broncos. Patriots are not, you know, unstoppable. They can be beat, and the Jaguars look like they might have had that recipe today, especially in the fourth quarter. Deion Lewis stripped of the football. Jaguars get the ball in pretty decent field position, and, you know, we saw Blake Bortles in the last week's game against the Steelers in the divisional round iced that game with a couple of big drives. Big Ben was on fire in the second half of that game. Looked like the Steelers were going to come back and win, but Blake Bortles just, you know, laced up his chin straps and put together some big drives. And you're thinking, huh, Blake Bortles might be able to do that again. He might have this Joe Flacco, Eli Manning level, just, you know, locked in, ice in his veins kind of level of playing in him where he can put together that kind of drive on the road in Foxborough to lead his team to the Super Bowl. And it looked like he might have been producing one of those, but... It just wasn't meant to be. New England Patriots are back in the Super Bowl. Back-to-back -back years for the Patriots in the Super Bowl. This doesn't happen often. I believe this only happened once before in 2003-2004. And a reminder, the Patriots won both of the Super Bowls. They went back-to-back -back in against the Eagles and the Panthers. So we'll see if history can repeat itself. With the New England Patriots, you got to think they're the favorites no matter in what situation. Because, like I said, with Brady and Belichick... They have the resume to when they're down 10, you say, huh, they can probably win this game. But like I said, there, it's not like there was no doubt that it wasn't going to happen because the Jaguars looked like they might have the formula. But in the second half of that game, you know, they got a couple of long Josh Lambeau field goals. Shout out to Josh Lambeau for making some tough ones in Foxborough. But otherwise, the Jaguars just weren't able to get chain enough first downs to keep Tom Brady off the football field. That was the big part of the first half of that game. You know, the first drive the Patriots had, the very first drive was a nice long drive, got a field goal out of it. But otherwise, the Jaguars did a good job of keeping Tom Brady off the field. And that's definitely what you want to do to beat the New England Patriots. But in the second half, they were able to stop the run game. Fournette was starting to get stymized. It's just put a ton of people in the box and said Blake Bortles beat us. And um, Blake Bortles didn't really beat them. Gave a good effort. You know, it's not Blake Bortles played bad or anything like that. Patriots played some good defense for what it's worth. The Stephon Gilmore game-saving play was an amazing swat on fourth down because it looked like Bortles made a good throw. D.D. Westbrook had a step. It's just one of those Madden animations, you know, that happens sometimes and it's like, come on. Did he really just swat that without really even looking at the ball? But he did. It was just a really good play by Stephon Gilmore. Tip your cap to him. Tip your cap to the New England Patriots in general. Patrick Chung was in the box in the second half, making some great stops in the run game. That was a nice back shoot by Deion Lewis, by the way, in this game that you guys see in the background. And then Tom Brady was Tom Brady. Like I said, no Rob Gronkowski. You know, it's not, it's not the greatest game Tom Brady's ever had. We've seen Tom Brady come back from wars, right? But... I mean, this is just one for the resume. Again, like I said, most likely the best defense in the NFL this season, depending on how you feel about the Minnesota Vikings or even the Philadelphia Eagles. But this is a really good defense. Talented all around. Great secondary. Great front seven. You saw it all throughout the game. You saw Campbell making plays. You saw Ramsey making plays. You saw Telvin Smith and Miles Jack making plays. But Tom Brady is Tom Brady. Danny Amendola, fine, I'll make it work. Chris Hogan, fine, I'll make it work. Brandon Cooks had a pretty good game. I believe he had 100 yards exactly, if I'm not mistaken. And even had one big drop that could have been more yardage on that. He looked like he had a, a touchdown catch that he potentially dropped right there. But, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't want to underestimate what the Patriots did. Because, like I said, I'm, I'm trying not to. This is the best defense in the NFL. But, you know, like I said, watching that game, I, it just felt like the Patriots were on pace to come back. But... 
The Jaguars defense still played really good in that second half. It's not like they folded. They got the Patriots to punt, I believe, three times in that game, including back-to-back -back drives at one point in the third quarter when the Patriots were at midfield. At that point, all you're asking is to, you know, shift the field position game. Twice you stop them at midfield, but the offense just couldn't produce. And like I said, they just couldn't chain those first downs. And getting first downs against an elite offense like the Patriots with Tom Brady is so necessary. And they just, unfortunately for them, couldn't get it done. It hurts because they played a really good game, but you have to play nearly perfect to beat the New England Patriots. And the Jaguars did make a couple of mistakes. Like I said, offensively, they weren't able to get those first downs in the second half. Defensively, two huge pass interference calls really changed the outcome of the game. And I know people are upset because like, oh, the Patriots got calls from the refs, but... Those were legitimate pass interference calls, all right? You can argue the Boye one and say it was overthrown and it was good coverage, but at the same time, Boye had two hands on the wide receiver and that just should not be allowed. He shouldn't put two hands on the wide receiver and get away with it, you know? Uh, like kind of pushing him out of bounds. So that's why that penalty was called. Boye just got way too handy, more handy than he needed to be, which is unfortunate because it was good coverage until he decided he wanted to play wrestling. And then the Jalen Ramsey one was just straight up got the dude by the neck. I believe it was Brandon Cooks again. Just weird, right? The thing is, both of those balls should have been incomplete. That's why there were huge pass interference calls. It's because they didn't have to be pass interference calls. It was just young DBs making inexperienced... Well, AJ Boy is not completely like a young guy. He's been around for a little bit. But especially Jalen Ramsey, young guy making just one bad mistake. But like I said, you got to play nearly perfect. And those were a lot of yards on each of those PI calls. And... It's just enough to get him back in the game. And then in that fourth quarter, before the game-winning drive, not a good punt by Norman, or Norman, whatever his name was. He punted from his own end zone, so, you know, you couldn't ask him to boom at 60 yards, but still not that great of a punt, not that much hang time. And then Amendola immediately returns the ball in field goal range with the Patriots down three. But the main part is, gave Tom Brady only 30 yards to work to win the game. Didn't have to go all the way downfield against this really good Jaguars defense. And like I said, that's all about field position. In a game like this... Field position matters a lot when both defenses are playing fantastic. You really need to control the field position. And that's what the Patriots did. They just played smarter in that second half. And, you know, no turnovers throughout the game besides that one fumble. Just both teams playing pretty clean, playing pretty disciplined. There weren't many penalties in the game besides the really big pass interference calls. And, you know, just at the end of the day, New England Patriots go into the Super Bowl. And we'll see what happens, man. I know a lot of people don't want to see the Patriots in the Super Bowl. I know a couple people didn't even like would rather see the Patriots in the Super Bowl that aren't Patriots fans just because they like to see history. I might be one of those people where, you know, I like to see history in sports and live as it happens. I've said it a couple of times. So I really do like to appreciate what Tom Brady's doing on the field, especially while he's still out here because he is 40 years old. Who knows how many years he still has left of playing at an elite level. This is still one of those years of him playing at an elite level, all right? Like him, hate him, whatever. Tom Brady is playing like the best quarterback in the NFL this season again. All right? I, I, I really don't think there's much of a doubt. Uh, you can say it's the dink and dunk system and yada, yada, yada. Whatever it is, it's working, right? It's working better than any other team's offense. The Patriots had the number one offense again this year. So <laughs> is that really just going to be a like a Josh McDaniels credit thing? Or are we going to give credit to Brady here, right? So we definitely can credit credit to them but at the same time a lot of credit to the jacksonville jaguars for making it this far they have a really good defense that's going to be in place together next season so next year i don't want to say the jaguars will be one of the favorites to get to the afc championship game but at the same time they're not going to not be the favorites right the steelers are probably going to be up there the patriots will definitely be the favorites and then the third team is probably the jacksonville jaguars again because they're gonna they're gonna have most of the pieces back the one question is the quarterback position. Blake Bortles is a, I believe, a restricted free agent this season, if not an unrestricted free agent. Either way, decisions to be made at the quarterback position for the Jacksonville Jaguars because you gotta find you gotta figure out whether Blake Bortles is enough for you and you know how you wanna spend your cap space and all that. Do you wanna bury it on Bortles or even a quarterback that's more expensive, whatever it is? Kirk Cousins is on the market, Eli Manning can get dropped from the Giants. Who knows, Josh McDaniels can end up on another team. Who knows, you know, just all those Jordy Man quarterbacks that can find their way on the team. So, Jack was a couple of questions to answer, but a very bright future. But at the same time, this just feels like a missed opportunity for them. I know they have a lot of years ahead of them, so you may think. But the window for success in the NFL is smaller than pretty much any other sport. Because of the way the salary cap and the contracts and all that work. Maybe the MLB has a shorter one, maybe. But I feel like the just... 
You gotta capitalize on these kind of games, and the Jaguars just didn't. They just didn't make the plays at the end, and Tom Brady and the Patriots did, and they'll be going to the Super Bowl. A really good game, though. A really good football game. You're impartial. If you're a Jaguars fan, you're disappointed. If you're a Patriots fan, you're elated. If you're a football fan and you're not, you know, whining about referees, that was just a really good football game at the end of the day, and just... Probably the greatest quarterback of all time making the comeback once again and winning the game against a really good defense without pretty much any weapons besides Brandon Cook. So we'll see what the Patriots do in the Super Bowl as you guys see this game going on in the background right here. Um, this was a pretty close game throughout. We made some really big plays with Deion Lewis that separated us from our opponent who played a good game, got some good user picks. We also got some of our own, so we were just picking each other off left and right. But the Deion Lewis play, just so many, you know, three big plays. Two back jukes, one juke on a kick return, and that pretty much defined the game. We're just going to get a pick six to uh, put salt in the wounds, I guess. We, I was thinking about kneeing it down at the one-yard line right here, but I don't know. I'm just like, It's a user pick. I might as well take it back, right? Whatever. So, we ended up winning this game. So, let me know what you guys think in the comment section about what broke down in today's game because... You know, <laughs> there's definitely a lot to talk about from this game. I'm curious to hear what you guys think about this game. Where do you guys think the Jaguars missed the opportunity or the Patriots capitalized? And anything else that's on your mind, just definitely let it fly in the comment section. I'll try to get back to as many of you guys as possible. Leave a like on the video if you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe for more Man 18 gameplays. I'll catch you guys, well, whenever the NFC Championship game ends. We'll see how that game ends. We'll get some feedback on that one. And yeah, I'll catch you guys next time.